Hello crochet friends and welcome to another video. I'm Graceface and today I thought we could take a look at everything that I made in 2023. It was a big year for me full of a lot of makes and milestones like having brain surgery in February. If you would have asked me before I compiled this list how much I accomplished last year I probably would have said not very much. I think that we can all be our own worst critic and my brain definitely likes to hang on to the negative things with a white knuckle death grip. Being neurodivergent and chronically ill makes just getting through the day difficult sometimes. So in my mind, I am always behind, falling short of my goals, and failing. This was honestly an eye-opener for me. Our perception doesn't always line up with reality, and I was really proud of myself after realizing just how much I managed to get done despite all of my setbacks. We have quite a varied list of items to go through today, so to make it a little bit easier, I've divided them into three categories. Amigurumi, or plushies, wearables, and miscellaneous. So let's just kick things off right now with Amigurumi. For this category, we're gonna have a few different subcategories, plushies that I designed, patterns that I tested for other designers, and things I made using patterns I purchased from other designers. I figured we'd just start off with my designs. And we're gonna start off strong with my largest single make of the year, my giant goose. This guy's based off of those big goose plushies that you'd see on Wish and Timu and AliExpress. I saw them on TikTok and the idea just drilled and drilled itself into my head until I finally just caved and made my own giant goose. I am really pleased with how he turned out. Although I do struggle to find anywhere to put him because he is just so big. His name is James Gustav Fowlin, and he is almost six feet long. And the pattern for him is free on my blog if you wanna go make a giant goose of your own. If you'd like to make a more manageable sized goose, you can also make a mini version. This is Gustav the Crochet Goose. I have become obsessed with making geese and have made probably at least a dozen of these guys. You can make him with or without wire in his neck. I like to use those bendy foam hair rollers from Dollar Tree. I do have a free video tutorial for him on my channel. I'll put a link in the places so that if you want to, you can go make a goose army of your own. My very first tutorial of the year was for a crochet knife and flower, which are accessories for one of my other designs, Peekaboo Pals Ghosty. It's a transforming ghost plush that goes from happy to angry. I made the design for the ghost in 2022, and I thought that the knife and flower would be the perfect first tutorial for my channel. The pattern for Peekaboo Pals Ghosty is available on my website and all the other places if you're interested in making your own, and you can make your own crochet knife and flower on my channel with my free tutorial. You can also make knives and flowers for your other plushies as well. I like to arm Gustav with a knife and turn him into a murder goose. <laughs> My next design was for the Peekaboo Pals Avocado and Egg. These guys transform as well, and they are part of my Peekaboo Pal series, which is all transforming plushies. I released these together as a combo pattern last spring. The next plushie design I released in 2023 was for my Peekaboo Pals Potato. I have a couple topping options that you can mix and match in the pattern, but my favorite combos are the butter and chives and a fully loaded potato. I am a huge potato lover and could exist solely on a diet of potatoes, so this plushie is really close to my heart. I also made a tutorial for these adorable little floof bats. They're cute and they're super soft and they're like a perfect stash buster for blanket and fur yarn if you have these laying around in your stash. I think they're freaking adorable and they're really fast to make if you're looking for something quick. I freehanded a bunch of these little pumpkins here and then I turned them into over the garden wall style jack-o'-lanterns. I am obsessed with both Halloween and over the garden wall, so you know I had to make some pumpkin friends. I also freehanded some F-bombs as a part of a Christmas present for my gaming friends. I did make a vlog about that if you wanna check it out, which transitions us right into things I made from other people's patterns. As part of that same gift box for my gaming friends, I made Pete the Potato. This pattern is from Tiny Friends Crochet. If you need a potato pattern, I highly recommend hers. She has loads of adorable food patterns and I recommend checking her out if you really like food, Ami. Also, as part of that gift box, I made Gus the Hammerhead Shark. And that pattern is from The Knot Artisan. It is a no-sew hammerhead shark pattern and I love this pattern, it's really amazing. The finished product is super freaking cute. I highly recommend you go check out Gus the Hammerhead Shark 
from the not artisan. I made a poison apple by Fanny Toys on Etsy as part of a secret Santa gift for one of my coworkers. My secret Santa person is a really big Disney fan and loves Snow White. So she was over the moon with the poisoned apple. Next, I made this which is Rosa the Dragon from The Nerdy Knitter. It was a project that I took on in February while recovering for surgery for my Chiari malformation. For some reason, I decided not to use any kind of supports in the dragon, like no wire, no nothing. I didn't use plastic canvas in the wings like they recommended in the pattern. I was like, no thanks. So the dragon itself just does not want to sit up on its own and hold its shape. I don't really have anywhere to put it right now anyway, so it's just kind of been stuffed in a box. I made a couple of astronauts using the Apollo the Astronaut pattern from Sister Stitch Co. on Etsy. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with space and I wanted to be an astronomer so bad until I found out how much math was involved and it killed my dream. So when I saw the astronaut, I had to get it. This one I made is supposed to be Dave from 2001 A Space Odyssey. I also love sci-fi and Arthur C. Clarke is one of my favorite authors. Seeing Dave makes me so happy. I especially like the reflections that I put onto his visor. It's supposed to be from the famous scene where Dave is in his spacesuit traveling in to shut down Hal. This one is one of my personal favorite projects I've ever made honestly. I made this cute cat pillow and the pattern is called Marshmallow Kitty from Trong Lu. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I saw them post about it in a Facebook group and went immediately and purchased it on their Etsy. It is really super cute. I think I also made this while I was recovering from surgery. And finally for this category, we have some Pee Wee Pals, which are a series of no-so small plushies from Not Jaded Co, who is the maker of the Leggy Frog. I feel like there's like 30 of them. I can't remember the number exactly. She has them broken up into different groups, so you don't have to buy all of them if you don't want to, but I just found ones that I really liked in every single one of the groups and couldn't make up my mind. So I said, screw it, and I just bought the whole set. I have not made all of them yet. I got distracted, which I tend to do thanks to ADHD, and forgot all about them and have not gone back and revisited them. There's a few that I made and gave away, like a gnome and mushrooms. One that I do still have is this baby a fish right here, which I thought turned out really cute. I made him in an orange just to make him like a really fancy goldfish. And I also still have this little guy. He is, I think he's a rat. He might be a mouse, but either way, he is so flippin' cute. Now that I've reminded myself about these patterns, I'm gonna have to go back and make more little peewee pals. Now it's time to cover patterns that I tested for other designers. First, we have the little bunny buddy pattern. This is from Crochet Me Zaddy. I made one with a Peter Rabbit theme, and then I also made another just cute little fluffy bunny. And the other pattern test I ended up doing last year was for Rasmussen Resin. Her makes are really adorable and her crochet hooks are so creative and fantastic. I love a good pun, so I was excited to test a punny pattern like these little Christmas tree frogs. These guys are really adorable and I had a blast in that testing group. That wraps up our Amagurumi category, so it's time for us to move on to wearables. We're gonna start this category off with my first ever wearable design, the Showtime Cardigan. Beetlejuice has always been one of my favorite movies since I was young. I am also a sweater addict. I thought the natural thing to do would be combine those two things together and make a Beetlejuice themed sweater. It is made to measure and beginner friendly. So if you are also a fan of sweaters and Beetlejuice, you can go make one of your own. I also made a sandworm witch hat to wear with my Showtime cardigan in videos that I made to promote the pattern. The base hat is the slouchy witch hat from the Entangled Fae, which I made in a white just chenille yarn. And I freehanded the sandworm that I put on top of the hat. I think the finished result turned out really cool. Moving right on to another banger, my mushroom fairy outfit. There are a few different elements to this outfit, so we're gonna break them all down individually. The skirt was made following a tutorial by Casseroles9 on TikTok. It is super easy to follow and beginner friendly as well. Also made to your own body measure. The top I'm wearing is a modified version of the Basic Halter by Passionate Goods. She has a tutorial on her channel if you wanna go make a top of your own. All of her tops are great and her video tutorials are really, really good as well. I freehanded the leg warmers that I'm wearing to match the sleeves, which I freaking love. They are the Puffy Buffy sleeve and they are by J Design 76 on Kofi. Coffee? 
or Peasant Coco on Instagram and TikTok. She is a friend of mine and I love her work. The sleeves are fabulous and I highly recommend them. They're super customizable as well. And of course, the hat. The hat is the Twisted Bleeding Tooth Hat Pattern by the Twisted Hatter. It's an amazing hat, a great pattern, and it is totally worth the time and effort to make. I do have a vlog on my channel covering me turning a blanket into this mushroom outfit if you are interested in seeing more behind the scenes about the process. This outfit is one of the largest and most involved projects I'd ever made and I am very, very proud of it. It's one of those things where you look at and you can't believe that you actually made it. I also made the Sakura vest by Molly Muffers. I think her designs are so pretty. This was the first pattern I've made from her and I really enjoyed it. I'm definitely going to be making more of this vest and more of her patterns. I made a couple of other halter tops as well. The white one is the Willow Top by Passionate Goods. It turned out great. Her tutorials are really easy to follow and her projects work up quickly too. For this gray and white one, I freehanded it. It's okay, it works just fine. It turned out a little more narrow than I'd wanted at the top. I mean, it totally works. It just it wasn't exactly what I envisioned. Talking about milestones, I made my first ever pair of crochet shorts last year. These are the Christmas shorts by TCD DIY. The design is super cute and I love them. The only drawback is the yarn that I used. This is some Red Heart Super Saver Ombre in gray. I got it for my mushroom outfit and ended up not using it. So I figured this was a good opportunity for me to stash bust. I'm glad that I did not end up using it for my mushroom outfit because the dye job on this yarn is very splotchy. It just left these dark spots that make it look like I spilt ink on myself or like I sat in something gross. I decided I'm just gonna wear these shorts around the house due to the bad dye job. These shorts are super comfy and I've already made another pair that you're gonna see on my channel really soon. The tutorial from TCD DIY was really easy to follow as well. And speaking of easy to follow TCD DIY tutorials, I followed another tutorial from her to get this classic sweater. It's made from an alpaca blend yarn that I picked up for like $1.50 a skein on clearance. I really fell in love with the color and how soft the yarn was. Initially, I started this sweater earlier in 2022, but I ended up taking a break after getting frustrated while redoing the cuffs. They turned out a little shorter than I wanted, so I decided I was just gonna redo it. My yarn choice really bit me in the butt on this one, and frogging this alpaca yarn was a flippin' nightmare. All the little fuzzy fibers that stick out tangle as you frog the stitches, and then they turn into knots that you have to separate with a needle. I even tried a hack that I saw on TikTok saying that if you put it in the freezer for a while, it would be easier to frog. It was not. In the end, I had to use a sewing needle to individually guide each loop of the stitch as I frogged it, and it would still get tangled. It took forever. I managed to finish all the last bits of the sweater and I was so proud. This is the first wearable I made that actually fit me appropriately, but there's just one thing. I, I don't like the way this color looks on me. I mean, I love the color and I love the sweater and it fits great. I just don't think that I look good in this shade of mustard. It makes me look really sick. Also, this sweater is so warm. <laughs> Even though I do like it, I never wear it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below if I'm being unfairly harsh on how the sweater looks on me. This leads me into the whimsical wearables. Like a mushroom outfit isn't whimsical. Okay, well, a couple more fun items at least. I made two goth moth hoods from JDesign76, who, if you remember, also designed those puffy buffy sleeves from my mushroom outfit. I made one in a brown, I think it was a Latte Stripes Red Heart Super Saver, and this one is an ombre gray. I used that blotchy Red Heart Super Saver ombre that I had, and I double-stranded it with a white yarn, and I really like the effect. I am definitely gonna be making more of these hoods. And finally in this category, we have my teapot hat. I feel kind of weird about putting it in this category because it's not something I would really wear every day. I mean, it's not a traditional hat, if you know what I mean. I originally made a teapot hat for a Greg cosplay back in 2022. A lot of people asked me for a tutorial on how to make the teapot hat. So I figured I would just go for it in 2023 and make a tutorial. I stuffed the hat I'm wearing in this video with just a little bit of polyfill, but that's totally optional. This year, I think I'd like to improve on my Greg by crocheting the actual overalls for the cosplay. We will see if I have time to get to that this year. <laughs> 
Our final category is miscellaneous. These are things that just don't really fit into the other two categories. It's kind of a random assortment of things, so I figured we would just call it miscellaneous and get on with it. Staying on the over the garden wall theme, we have my rock friend pillow. This is just a giant rock fax rock. I made this one with Premier XL, but it works just as well with a double stranded gray blanket yarn. Next up, we have some vape holders. I made this lightsaber one just for fun, and I made this cactus one as part of a commission for my friend. I freehanded both of these myself, but I believe there are patterns for both designs on Etsy. Also as a part of that commission for my friend, I made a chicken pot holder, a divided dice bag, and some coasters. The pot holder is a free pattern on YouTube from Bag -a Day Crochet. I made two of them and crocheted them together to make it thicker. The coasters were something I freehanded as well, but there are patterns out there for a leaf motif that you could then stitch onto a circle like I did. The final item for my friend's commission order was a divided dice bag. I was inspired by a photo from Pinterest my friend sent me of the bag of holding, which is a divided dice bag you can find on Etsy. My friend wanted a bag that her bridesmaid could use to store all of the different stones they used to play Mancala on their game nights. And they loved the divided bag that I made. The next item in this category is my ghost friend backpack. I made a couple of these last year while I was working on the video tutorial, which is on my channel. And finally, we have this shopping bag that I made from some cotton yarn I picked up on clearance. These bags are really simple to make, but they just feel like they take forever to me. I don't know why. So far, this bag has been awesome and it holds a ton of groceries. An honorable mention does go out to the grocery bag that I repaired using my iCord maker. I know it was more of a repair than a make, but I did make a mosaic crochet patch to put onto the bag, so that kind of deserves a mention, right? I'm sure that there are a few items I forgot to include, but overall it was a pretty comprehensive list. I was really surprised by just how many things I managed to make in 2023. It was a ton more than I ever would have thought. Which item was your favorite? Be sure to drop me a comment down below and let me know. I'm going to try to track all of my makes for 2024 and then we can meet back here next year and do this all over again. In the meantime, I better stop talking and get busy because I have a lot of crocheting to do. Thank you so much for watching and happy crocheting!